Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome back to another video. Now today I have something a little bit different. I think I found a perfect mod combination to bring Fallout Settlement Building into Skyrim. There's four mods that we're going to be downloading here today. I'm going to showcase all of them as well. We have the Interact Build Decorate mod, Anna's Unique Spells, Anna's Interior Editor, and Cheat Room to duplicate items if you need to. So these, you pretty much only need these three mods, but Cheat Room makes everything so, so much easier because you can duplicate items and you don't need to have, you know, a bunch of materials to craft everything. But these four mods single-handedly bring Fallout Settlement Building into Skyrim. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how that works here. And I'll also show off the house that I have actually created using these four mods all together to show you what's possible using these mods. So the Interact Build Decorate mod is a mod that's pretty new for Xbox users and I think PC as well. And this just allows you to build furniture and it's a whole new interaction system that allows you to place furniture and just do a bunch of things that, you know, is more Fallout Settlement Building-esque. And as Unique Spells allows you to place full houses down as well as place map markers and other things. And Anna's Interior Editor just brings more furniture into Skyrim that you can use. So this is going to be incredibly useful for building houses. So now I'm actually going to back out and go and load up a save and show you what's possible using this mod combination. Okay, so now that we're loaded into the game with all four of these mods installed, you want to come over to Riverwood. But before we get started, I do want to say there is something very important that you'll have to do, and that's go under your magic. And under alteration, you'll have cheat game options and all these cheat spells. You want to get the cheat teleport spell out and cast that and go to the cheat room. I know a lot of people already know about cheat room, but just in case you haven't, it's a very, very useful mod that has a little room in the game that has everything that is featured in Skyrim all in one big room here. So you'll want to come over to here and go to cheat rings and you're going to want to pick up the fortify carry weight or cheat carry weight, which increases and basically gives you infinite carry weight. So we're going to grab that and we're going to put that on. And once we have that on, we'll be able to run around once we have all the items in our inventory. You can also come up to this thing that allows you to increase all your stats and skills and you can go and add to remove by and go to 10,000 and then go to carry weight. But if you're gonna be constantly, you know, saving and loading, uh, every time you load a save, it resets your carry weight back to its original. So you'll notice that every time you load up a save, you'll be over encumbered again. But if you do have the cheat carry weight ring on, it'll just be permanent, so you won't have to worry about it. So now that we have that there, we're gonna grab some materials so you can come over here. And you'll just want to take everything out of this chest here. I normally just press X to take all, but you can just get any material that you need from here. And then we can start crafting. So let's go back to our original position, which was in Riverwood, which actually is where we have to go to begin with. So now that we're in Riverwood, we're going to come up here and there should be a little workbench right here. Yep. And if you go to this woodworking bench, you have a ton of items that you can craft here. The one thing you are going to want to craft, though, is the interact spell, which is the, uh, there's decorating tips right here. You're going to want to craft this, which allows you to place items, bury corpses, move furniture, store materials, and light areas. So you'll want to get that. And there's also other things that you can get if you get, like, refined wood, linen wraps, and stuff like that, which you can all get from the cheat room. And look at all this furniture here. So there's so much already, and we haven't even touched the Anna's interior editor or Anna's unique spells yet. So there's already so much here. You can also get the packaging instructions, which gives you more spells that are featured in this mod. And what you're gonna wanna be looking for is this right here, these shack floors, foundations. These are gonna be the most important thing whenever you get started with building, cause you need a foundation to build on, of course. So um, I'm gonna ignore these for now, but these are going to be very important. These blocks here, we got ramps, roofs for whenever you finish your house and you want to put a roof on it. There's tons of different options that you can go along and do here, even like corner roofs. Scroll down a little more. There's stairs, walls that you can place to actually enclose everything in your house. So there is infinite possibilities whenever it comes to this. We are going to want to craft another woodworking bench here. So I'm going to craft that just so I don't have to keep coming back to Riverwood each time. And now that we've crafted the decorating tips, I'm going to read that as well as the packing instructions, which is going to give me a new power. If I go down to power, I now have interact here. This is going to be one of the most important parts of this mod and how it actually works. 
So now that we have that enabled, let's go find a place to actually start building. Okay, so I think we found a pretty decent location to build. I think I'm going to do a little overlook here, like a white run overlook will be the name of the house, I guess. We're going to build a couple foundations out here and just see what we can place in this little location here. So I'm going to go into my inventory here and let's see, we got, I, I duplicated a bunch of walls here and I'll actually show you how to duplicate right now. So let me head back to the cheat room real quick. Let's head on over there. And once this loads up here, okay, so you'll wanna come over to this thing right here, this chest, and see we have an item duplicator input. This is where I put all of my shack floors and foundations in. And you basically just press this button, say how many you want. I pressed a thousand because we have infinite carry weight and I don't wanna to have to keep coming back, but you can get as many as you like here or as many as you need. And then in the duplicator output, you'll get the 1000 here, so. We won't ever have to go back to the woodworking bench unless we have to craft something that we didn't duplicate. So that just makes the whole process a lot faster and easier in my opinion. So I'm now going to fast travel back. And now that we're back, I actually already placed this woodworking bench, but I'll show you how to actually do it. So you'll go under magic, powers, and using that interact that we have, you're gonna press the shout button or RB as it is for me. And it says now interacting in the top left corner. And now anytime I, press something, it'll say, what should I do? Take, adjust, cancel, or pick up. I guess take and and using this is the same exact thing. We'll go to adjust and you can set angles, nudge it, rotate it and move it. But my favorite thing is move and orientation. You're gonna wanna always press upright. I normally always do upright, but if you don't want it to you know, move out of place, you'll have to use current. But upright just makes it stand completely up. And as you look around, as you can see, just like Fallout Settlement Building. It goes where you are and you can fully see it. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way. I'll go place it over here or something. It's a little slow, but you can even move around. Say you wanna rotate something. I can just twist my orientation with it and go back and forth. So I'm just gonna place it down like right here. Okay, so now that it's where we want it to be, I'm gonna press A on it again. And then if we do adjust, we can do other things with it, but I actually think it's pretty good where it is. So now you press RB again to stop interacting. And now when I walk up to it, I can actually use it. So if I am interacting with it, I can you know pick it up and do whatever I want. But as soon as I stop interacting and I walk up, I can just use it as a regular workbench. And we can craft anything we would like from here instead of going to Riverwood. So now that we have that out of the way, let's actually start building the house. So first things first, we're gonna need some foundation. So I'm gonna press RB again, so that we're now interacting again. And let's get our foundation set up. So what should we use? I'm thinking maybe this, because I don't wanna have a bunch of like things blocking the way. So I'm just gonna use these regular shack foundations. I'm gonna drop one and put it to upright. And now I can move this around. So I'm going to just place Let's say one right like that. And you crouch in order to drop it. That's how you drop items. I forgot to mention that. Whenever you're moving around and you wanna actually play something, just crouch and it'll completely get out of your thing and you can just look at it how it is there. I'll walk up and now we can build this or if you wanna to align to a base, if you have another base and I'll show you how that works too. Or adjust and you can move it around again if you'd like. And move it however you'd like and then once you're happy with it just crouch it'll get out and then walk up and build it this will stick it in place permanently and if you walk up again you can deconstruct it or cancel uh, deconstruct takes it away and puts it back in your inventory and just pressing this doesn't do anything but that's how to cancel and now let's actually put down a floor so now i'm going to drop a floor go upright again and now you actually don't have to be perfect, so you don't have to just constantly line it up. It'll snap to where it has to go if you just crouch above it or have it somewhere close. See, it's kind of floating there. But if I press A on it and press align to base, it'll just quickly snap into location, and then I build it. And there you have it. So now I need a way to get up onto this platform, so I'm going to need some stairs. So let's go down. I have a ramp, but I'm thinking I'm going to use some stairs. So let's drop the stairs, go upright, we'll move around a little bit, place it kind of close. See, it's not perfect, of course, it's a little high, but if I press A on it and go align to base, or actually it would be 
aligned to adjacent base. There we go. Now I have a staircase perfectly snapped. And I go in, I build it, and boom! We have a staircase that leads up onto our little platform here. So now we need to continue on and start building a little more. So I'm going to grab another foundation here, the same one that we had before. Go upright. And now this is where it gets really easy. So you'll just place one here. Let's grab another one. Oops. Place it relatively close. So we'll go about there. It's going to be floating, uh, of course, at first, but you can always come back and say, here, I'll actually show you that in a minute. But Let's say I want to start these foundations here, so I'll go align to adjacent base because it's beside it. I'll build that there. Go to this one, align to adjacent. It lines up, and I build it. We'll do it one more time there, just so we can have a nice little square going on. Upright, and place it about there. And build. So now we have a bunch of different foundations, and what you can do, I know it's floating and looks kind of ridiculous right now, but if you go back into the foundations, and you go here and you go upright, you can sit here and you can align it up so it's perfect. So I'm not gonna make it perfect because it may take me a bit, but say you want it to be perfect in line. It's not perfect in line, but you'll just have to line it up like that. You can also align to, you can align to base on these ones, so you will have to do a little bit of adjusting and moving around. And something that's very important that I found to be extremely useful whenever going in and building something like this is you're gonna to need to be able to fly because just walking around and adjusting things how it is while you have gravity enabled is pretty difficult because you know you may wanna put something up high and it may be out of your reach. You may wanna put something into the ground or down low and you may not be able to reach as far. So in order to get everything how you would like it, let me just place this floor first, align the base, build that. So now we have a little walkway over here. If you wanna make everything so much easier, you're gonna travel back to the cheat room like I am here. And if you walk back up to the cheat ring chest that we had access before, and you scroll on down, you could pick up, where is it? The TCL or toggle collisions mod, which just gives you no clip. And then if you want to move a little faster, you can grab the speed multiplier by three. I think three is pretty good. Five is a little too fast. 1.5 isn't really fast at all. I think three is a good middle ground there. So once you actually have those in your inventory, as you can see, I already do. Let me fast travel back to the house. And once we're there, let me show you. I'll, put, I'll just use the toggle collision so I can actually fly now. I can run around in the air do whatever I want like that and this allows me to build with so much freedom so let me grab another shack floor do it upright and now I can move in and place it where I want to go and I'm flying around so it makes everything so much easier let's do it one more time do upright and boom okay so now that we have everything in place there, I'm going to get out of collision mode because it's where I want it to be. Align to base. Align to base. Build and build. So now we have a nice little 2x2 two two area that we can walk on. So you can keep doing this as much as you want and actually build a little house. I'll just show you a little bit of house building here. So let's go down and grab a wall real quick. Um, you may need a frame first, so actually let me... Grab a little frame here. Let's see. Let me just grab this one. This is an example. This isn't gonna be like final product or anything. Let's say I just wanted to build a little hut right here. I grabbed a little frame here. Walk up, align to the base. Build it. And now, if I go down to my walls, let's say I want, what do we want here? I'm going to want a corner wall first, so let me grab that. Go over here, line it up properly. Some of these are a little weird in how you line it up. I'll just stick it there. Align to base. No foundation found. That means that there isn't anything close by. Oh, I accidentally just built it. 
My bad. You adjust it. Move it upright. And I'll place it. Oh, it's the wrong way. That's why. I have to place it this way. See see what I mean? Like if why you need the no clip? Because I have to go all the way down here in order to get it relatively close to where it has to go. And then I can or I should be able to just jump up. Line to base. There we go. Okay, now it's doing what it's supposed to. Walk up and build that there. So now that's there. I can go in. Let's try to add like a window or something. So let me find a wall that has a hole in it like a window. There we go. We'll use this one. Upright. We'll place that there. Align to base. Build it. And finally, the roof. I know this is just an example here. This isn't going to be the final product. I'm going to remove this and actually get on and show you what I've created here. But just a little example of how these mechanics work. So now that we have a roof, we're going to place it down here. Look down a little farther. Up there. Yeah. And then align to base. Build. And there you have it. You now have... A little roof, of course, you can spread the walls out a little more and move on, add more frames and build. But this is really all you have to do. I mean, it's it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. And you can have things such as if I go down here, you can have a door. Put a door down. Upright. And it doesn't have to be this small either. This is more just an example. Um, but here we have a line to base. And I could put another wall here if I'd like and another wall on this side. But just as our example here, I'll build this here. And now you have a little door and you can, you know, continue on the wall on the right side. And that's really how you have it here. So now that I've showed you everything when it comes to the interact mod, I'm going to show you how my foundation was set up and actually what I ended up creating just using this interact build decorate mod here. All right, so now we are back. And this is the little foundation that I came up with here. You walk up here, there's going to be, I think, a little crafting station here. We're going to walk over here. This is where the Whiterun Overlook name comes from. You get a huge, nice overlook of Whiterun in the distance there. And we'll come downstairs and go on to the inside, where we have a bunch of open areas here, lots of windows, and lots of room to work with here. So this is pretty much what you can create, and more. I mean, you can have your own vision and go with whatever you'd like. This is just what I've created here. And this is a pretty good, you know, basis. I think we have a nice open area here that we can put a bunch of furniture in. And speaking of furniture, this is where the Anna's Unique Spells and Anna's Interior Editor mods come in. So once you have your foundation all set up, I'll just show you from the outside real quick. Once you have your foundation all set up and ready to go, and, you know, even underneath, like I said earlier, it takes you some time, but you can get it working pretty good. As you can see, there's all the way down and is structurally sound and doesn't really look weird at all. I think this is a pretty good basis to start with before we furnish anything. Um, but to furnish things, you can use the workbench, of course, like I have here. You can definitely use this to craft a bunch of furniture, but we want more options than just what this mod brings. So that's where in Anna's interior editor comes in. So what you want to do is fast travel over to Whiterun. And once you're inside Whiterun, we're just going to turn around here and go into here. And there should be a door here. This is Anna's test house. You're gonna head right in, into here. And inside here has a bunch of different furniture items that you can use within your house. And I'll show you that as soon as we load in here. There's just a big open area here that you can explore and you know test things out and place things down. It's a, just a really big empty house. But the part that's not empty over here with all these chests is this is where we have food and ingredients, Anna's food that has new and unique textures to it, uh, plants and books that you can place, furniture, tableware, luxury furnitures with new unique textures, uh, exterior actors and trophies, armor, potion and hanging things, as well as weapons, soul gem, and other effects that you can add as well. And uh, there's a couple notes on how to use the mod, but we already know how to use it. We need to just jump right in here. So first things first, you'll want to walk up and you have the furniture item here, so you want to open that. And here you have a bunch of unique floor pieces that you can use as like carpets or different types of wood. Say you don't like the Interact Build Decorate wood, you can use this instead. And this actually works with the Interact Build and Decorate mod and you can use all of these furniture items alongside it. 
So let me scroll down and find a couple things that are useful. We have uh, Ariel's Pedestal, Arcane and Arcane Enchanter stuff, an anvil that you can use to craft with, Alchemy Labs, all of the crafting stations that you'll need, other unique barrels. This is pretty much every item that you can find in Skyrim that isn't able to be interacted with. Now it can be placed at will. So this is extremely useful and a very great mod to have alongside the Interact Build Decorate mod. So we have other common crates that you can place down. Just any furniture item that you can possibly think of will be in this chest here. So you could just, you know, have a field day with all of the different, you know, options that you have using this little chest here and grab as much as you need because, you know, we have infinite carry weight. I wouldn't recommend taking everything out of this chest because whenever you are decorating your house, you know, you're just gonna have to sift through a giant inventory of stuff. So try to keep your inventory slightly light, but not incredibly light. I mean, we have, you know, what is that? Six million or six, yeah, six million carry weight. We already have a lot of stuff in our inventory to begin with. But there's tons of different stuff that you can place here. And I'll show you exactly how I, you know, I'm going to decorate my house in a second here. I just want to showcase this mod here. You also have clutter and tableware, which has Alembic, Amethyst, the smaller items in the game, bees in a jar, all the other things in a jar, things that you wouldn't normally be able to place like business ledgers, the boss of the gray fox. Um, let's see what else we got. Just anything that you would like to fix in place. Pretty much every item in the game is in here. You can put... You know, an East Empire shipping map on the wall is a little display item. Let's see what else we got here. Just regular gold if you want to fix gold in place and actually be able to drop gold pieces. This is where you'll do it here. There's gold piles as well that you can use, which are really cool. Golden ship model, the golden urn, a bunch of unique items that you wouldn't be able to drop or quest items are all featured in here as well. As well as new items such as like these rags have new unique textures on them that you wouldn't normally see so you can use those i really like this one uh let's see what else we got statue of debella that you can place tons of stuff the the opportunities are endless whenever it comes to the customization of this mod and you can use any of these items to place in your house and i just absolutely love it here's exterior actor and trophy which is extremely useful because you can have a pet now so let me grab this dog real quick these will be featured under your scrolls by the way and you can just place them like this and now you have a dog super awesome and this is a very unique chest that has you know you can have hadvar from riverwood so you can pretty much put a trader inside of your house which is awesome you can have a blacksmith that sells you items you can have a farm with chickens uh cows other dogs if you if you want like one of these dogs here you can have a dragon priest in your house a dragon which i probably wouldn't recommend they'd be too big and move around all the time but you can if you'd like to you know the opportunities are endless like i say uh horses you have you know a horse like that you have brown horses gray uh saddled black brown and gray mages merchants that you can sell things to a tailor so much stuff here so now that i've showed you anna's interior editor there's one last place that we have to travel to and that's into the general goods store in white run here so let's go visit bellathor and actually figure out how we use anna's unique spells which is one of the final mods that we have in our combination here so right now we're going to be going into this strong box here and it has a bunch of unique things i would recommend taking everything out because this is the mod that allows you to spawn full houses you heard me correctly full houses that you can just live in if you'd like if you don't want to build and you just want to have a regular house that you can just place this is the mod to do so all of these are houses that you can just place and walk into and have a full house and i'll show you exactly how that works in a second here but there's tons of stuff that you can do here so we're just going to take all of this out we're going to leave now one more thing before we travel back to our house that i forgot to mention inside of this strong box and apparel thing here if i can open it <laughs> Inside of this strong box here, there's gold that you can get and also all of the houses as well here. But uh, the one in Bellathor's General Goods also has it too, so either way it's fine. Uh, but you're going to want to pick up these Anna's Interior Editor rings here. They're very important in order to place a bunch of items around. Sorry, I forgot to mention that, but you'll just want to grab it out of this strong box here. Now we can head back, which I think we can fast travel from here. So yeah, it was around the Hunting Brew Meadery, so let's just fast travel back. Okay, so now that we're back at our original house, I'm gonna turn around here and show you what you can do with the new things that we've just picked up. So if you put on the Anna's Interior Editor Magic Ring, it gives you a new spell called, where is it? 
AIE fix object, which allows you to, anything that you place down, you can fix it by shouting at it using this power here. But we also have Anna's house six, which is the ability to spawn a house. So I'm going to go do that over here. Now this isn't going to look right because you know, obviously we're not going to be doing that. We're building our own house, but I just want to show you how it works here. So let me just try placing it. I don't care if it's in the stump. I'll just try placing it right here. I'm going to spawn in and it's going to float up and down and we'll just wait for it to get to a pretty decent orientation. Where's the front door at? I think the front door's on that side. So you can walk around this side and it's going to rotate. As you walk around, it'll just rotate until it gets to a place that you'll like it. It looks very finicky right now as it's floating around. Oh. Alright, let's just say I wanted it right there. <laughs> so it looks ridiculous because this stumps in the way, but you get the picture. You can spawn in a house, and now if I go back into here and I do a door and marker, I cast it. Put it in the right place. Yep, there it is. Probably could do a little better than that. And play around with it a little more. Okay, that's fine for now. And now you'll want to shout at it using that thing there. And there's a door. So now you have a house with a door, and you can just walk right in. And here we go. We have a white run house already pre-made and ready to go for us. So <laughs> That's pretty much how you do it there. You can put down a house wherever you'd want in Skyrim, put the door down right in front of it, and then travel through and you have yourself a brand new house. It's very quick and very easy, but we don't wanna have the quick and easy route. We wanna build our own house. So that's why I just wanted to show you guys the mechanics of how that works. But now let's get back to actually building and furnishing our new house over here that we've created using the Interact Build and Decorate mod walk over here i did want to use anna's interior editor for one thing though and that is where is it if I can find it the trap door here i really like this idea so if i walk up here and i i don't need that other house anymore if i want the trap door so we'll do anna's house 12 and marker i'm going to place one right around here i just spawned in two but uh now I can use this trap door that's going to just be featured inside of my house. So I'll walk up, go into the trap door. And now I have a nice little mannequin room. So this is going to be very useful and let's travel back up. Now, whenever it comes to wanting to furnish your new house, let's go back into my bedroom here. I have a bunch of scrolls in my inventory now that I picked up from that little room that I showcased earlier. And I'm just going to show you a little bit of what we can do here. So let me find something that I want to place down. Let's do an arcane enchanter. So we'll grab that. It now is a scroll in my inventory that I can cast with the left trigger there. And I can cast it a bunch of times to get it to where I want it to go. So let's just say about there is fine. I'll make sure I have AIE fix object on and I'll shout at it. And now it's an arcane enchanter that I can use. That's a good start there. Super simple, very easy to do. Let's see what else we can place. I'll do a couple more just to show you what's going on here. Here's a light source that I can place. I'll place one over here in this corner. See, now I have some light shedding in on the place. That'll be good. See, it's super simple. Like, you just place the object that you want down. Let's do a round table over here. Place it down, shout at it. Boom. So I'm just placing stuff left and right now. Once you get the hang of this and you start to get a vision of, you know, everything that you want and how your house is actually going to look, you pretty much can't stop. And you'll see that in a second whenever I actually show you the full tour of everything that I've created here. But there's so much that you can do with this. You can even place knapsacks down. Let's say I wanted to have a knapsack. Place that. Now I have a knapsack that I can open up and store stuff in. Let's see, are there any more examples that I can use? Uh, chairs. Say I want a chair. Boom. Place it. Now I can sit in it. I'm just super excited to finally have a mod on Xbox that can actually do all this. Say I want my double bed to be in this corner. I know my stuff might be in the way. Place it over here. It's not gonna be perfect, but oh, that's actually not too bad. Here we go, and I can sleep in it now. So now I have a little bedroom built 
a couple random things here and there, but this is just an example, really. And you can build as much furniture as you'd like and have just tons of fun with this mod. And I forgot to show you earlier, whenever I put this trap door down, if you go under your map, you now have a map marker for your house, Home Marker 12. I wish I could change the name of it. Home Marker 12 isn't that fancy of a name. I would change it to the White Run Overlook because I think that's going to be the name of the house. But Home Marker 12 that you can now fast travel to whenever you'd like. So it's super useful and you don't always have to travel to a place that's close by and then run to your house. You can just always have a marker inside of your house. And I think that's really cool. So now I think it's time we go on to the full grand tour of this completed house. So I'll meet you guys there. All right, so I think we're pretty much ready to give the grand tour. I didn't think I would go this overboard with everything because I spent about 15 hours doing this, building the foundation and just making everything look right because I just couldn't stop because this was just so much fun. I'm telling you, once you get a vision, you can't stop building. It is just so much fun. But this is the White Run Overlook, guys. Now, I do want to say that everything that you see, whether it's a bowl on a table, goblet, candlestick, everything inside of this house, and I mean everything, was hand-placed which definitely makes sense for how long this took, about 15 hours to put everything all together. And I just, it was so much fun. I just, that's all I gotta say about it really. Uh, so we're gonna walk over here. We have my little crafting station here with grindstone. We got a workbench and a chest with a bunch of clutter items inside, such as my ebony ingots, iron ingots, and more. Got my tanning rack there. My little bench, just in case I have some friends over. We're gonna walk over here. We have a campfire. We can sit down at night and just have a nice little chat. Turn around, we have some firewood for the campfire and some barrels that I can access and actually store items in if I'd like on my bench. And then we'll walk up the stairs here. Got a nice little table with a platter. Brilliant view of Whiterun. Got a temple bench here. Nice little rug on the bottom and another bench with some plates, tankers, and a jug. So brilliant view of Whiterun. I also wanted to put a little thing on the top roof, so I did the little uh, thing up there. I didn't really know what else to put up here. I was going to put like training dummies and maybe a place to train, but I didn't think it would look that great from the outside. So I just stuck with that. So let's head back on downstairs and show you the inside of the Whiterun Overlook. So as soon as we walk in here, we got a nice little table here. We're having some sweet rolls for dinner. Got some nice little things on display, such as Mercer's plans and the East Empire shipping map on the wall. Got a display case, tankards, potions, my alchemy lab that I can sit here and use if I'd like. Satchel, bunch of potions on the background there. Got my oven. Little uh, mud crab on the wall there too. Some jugs, some other tableware and my silverware in here <laughs> uh mead barrel rags you know the works got my display case here with mayroon's razor inside just going to close that down real quick and here is my little workstation area i really like how this turned out i'm very very happy with how everything came together here Got my statue of Debella with some strange amulets there. My bench. Got a map of Skyrim. As well as the Dawnbreaker and Chillren inside of my display case here. The display case kind of clips, but I'm not too worried about it. I think it looks just fine. But when it comes to my workstation, I got the lexicon here. <laughs> Walk up. This is my little map area and, you know, place where I plot my next move. A little map. Bugs in a jar and more. Torch on the wall. Little strong box I can use here. My business ledger and how I do all my business work on this side of the table. And these are all actually able to be stored in too, so I can store any items I'd want in these cupboards. Got my rugs down. I really like the rugs in this game. I really like where you can place them and how they turn out. I think they just look great. So that's that little section there we got ariel's bow which is my favorite little centerpiece of the room dragonstone up on the wall there there's the arcane enchanter that i had my staff enchanter as well as a, another brilliant view out the window there i love all these windows that i have here 
but a pretty small house, but I really like how it turned out. Got my bookcase for whenever I start picking up some books. And now moving on to the bedroom. Here's my bedroom. Walk in, I got a nice little shrine to Kinnereth, another map of the dragon burials, some instruments that I want to play, another amulet, some coin purses, my golden ship model. There's so much to see here. I, I really crammed as much as I could in this very small location here. Got a bunch of stuff up on the wall as well, up top. My bust of the gray fox and a safe for where I'm going to keep all my gold. There's a lot to take in here. And now, I think it's time we travel down into the basement and show you what this is all about. Now this is my crafting room. This is where I display everything, craft everything, and just keep all my goodies. And I have everything all laid out perfectly. We got the ebony blade, another sword there, all my elven gear, as well as the shield, elven bow, all the armor there, then Skyforge steel stuff, as well as just steel items here. Got my glass items on the left side here. The mannequins sometimes walk off the platforms. It's a little creepy, but uh, it's nothing too hard to deal with. They, Depending on how many times you come in and out of this little hole and trap door, they might be in different locations each time, but you can always just fix them up. It's pretty easy. Just in case I want to craft something, I have a Shrine of Zenithar that boosts my crafting skills there. Moving on, I have just some more gear and my Daedric items over here. My mage items, such as my, you know, dragon priest staffs, all my unenchanted staffs behind here. Big chest where I can put anything I'd like. The robes we got on there. Another dragon priest. All my ebony gear. Then in here we have an ebony dagger. On the other side we have the blade of woe. And just some other, here's a dragon priest dagger in here. Just some other things that I thought I'd put on display. And then actually moving on to my other armor, we have blades, imperial storm cloaks, wolves, dwarven, dragon plate, daedric, dragon scale, orcish, nightingale, thieves guild armor, dark brotherhood armor, and then my actual smelter where I can smelt all my goods and place all the stuff in here, as well as all my clutter and ebony ore and all the ores that I've collected in my travels. So there's so much fun to be had by, you know, using these mods all together in conjunction with one another because you could pretty much build like Fallout Settlement Building. And I absolutely love it. As you can see, I spent so much time going in and making everything as detailed as possible and making sure everything functions properly too so it's all usable. And this is pretty much my brand new player home for Skyrim. Using only four mods, I was able to create all of this. And it did take me some time because I was just having so much fun. I wasn't even keeping track of how much time I was spending on this. So really, you can do anything you'd like, build any type of house you would want, and just have so much fun using these four mods together. Now, the final thing that I want to say whenever using all of these mods together is save often. Because I didn't really have any crashes at all when I was building this, but that doesn't mean that you won't have any, and maybe I just got lucky, I'm not sure. But... You know, you never want to lose progress in this because it does take a long time to get everything in place and say you place a bunch of items and then maybe you go away to do a quest for a sec and then you crash, you then just lost all of that stuff that you built. So I would strongly recommend, you know, creating a bunch of saves like I did here. This is before I started. Moving up, we have whenever I found the location and then going on, you know, I got some more materials. There's the foundation and the thumbnail there. Moving up, there's where I was doing the bottom foundation and just so on and so forth. Just, you know, keep saves and tabs on your progress so that you don't lose anything. Say you have an unfortunate crash or maybe you play something that you can't remove. You always want to be able to go back and not lose any progress at all. So this is pretty much the way of doing so. I have about 35 saves that I used throughout all of this. You know, as I, you can see in the thumbnails as I'm progressing through and building a bunch of stuff here. Well, now I'm working on the inside, you know, just going through and keeping a tab on your saves and, you know, noting all your progress and, you know, just make sure you don't lose anything, guys, because I would hate for you to build so much stuff in Skyrim and have a brilliant house. And then right before you go to save it, you crash and you lose it all. So... I'm not saying that this mod causes crashes, but you know, crashes in Skyrim can happen and they have happened. So just be safe out there guys and have fun building. 
So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this little tutorial and showcase of four brilliant mods that you can put together in order to bring Fallout settlement building into Skyrim. And if you have any other suggestions on, you know, things you'd want me to build in the future, or maybe other things you'd want me to add to this, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description, and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions to there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you.